Hi friends. Edie, Yampa, and I are hanging out in the backyard, enjoying some beautiful sunshine and looking at the shapes in the clouds and looking at the leaves. It's amazing. And I thought I'd just come on here because I almost didn't post this podcast. Yeah. Ab <laughs> and the reason why is that I've I was processing in real time the overturning of Roe v. Wade, and that just happened right as I was filming the podcast, and I was really down because of it and mad, and so I curse a little bit more than normal, and I think that the, the first part of the podcast is just a little more serious than I normally am, and... <sighs> It's taken me a long time to put it up because I was worried that that's not what people need right now, but I also wanted to be authentically myself and just put out how I was feeling and how I was processing the overturning of Roe. So um, if for whatever reason you are here for an escape and you don't want to see someone processing that, then take care of yourselves and please advance to the timestamp uh, that I will put here. And if you think it would be helpful to you to process Roe v. Wade, the overturning of Roe v. Wade with a friend and have some camaraderie with how you're feeling, then please, by all means, watch this intro. But yeah, if you're uh, looking for an escape, the timestamp will be here. All right, take care of yourselves. Hello and welcome to Sonder. My name is Maggie. I am a knitter, bibliophile, sewist, doctor, new mother, and very angry citizen living here in the Republic of Gilead. What the actual fuck is going on? Um, Honestly, I'm not really going to talk about it too much, and the reason why is because it just brings me so down. I am referring to the fact that the Supreme Court of the United States overturned Roe v. Wade a few days ago and essentially took away, not essentially, took away the rights of millions of people. Um... And boy, is it fucked. I like, I don't even know where to begin, but there are a couple things that I do want to say, which I've already talked about this um, on the channel. And so, you know, I don't feel like I need to say a whole lot because people know where I stand, but I'm scared and I'm angry. And, you know, as someone who has a tremendous amount of privilege, being a cis white woman living in Denver, Colorado, where, you know, the right to choose is in our constitution and we have paid parental leave in our state legislature, you know, it's just astonishing to me to think about people who are living in different places and people who have different means and what this will mean for them and also the precedent that this sets for all of us for the government to be able to keep you from getting a medical procedure that is necessary. Um, it's just frightening. And man, I'm, I'm just, it's so fucked going into 4th of July because I'm just, you know, I've like never been less patriotic and uh, that's saying a lot because Trump was just in office. So yeah, I don't know. It's been a hard time. I've just been doom scrolling and worrying and thinking about things that I can do. I think there are several things that I can do, including obviously donating money, but some of the other things that I think are really important if you can't donate money um, to various different causes is staying mad staying mad and using your voice. I know that it can feel really, really hard when we have no control over the Supreme Court in a lot of ways. The Supreme Court is a lifetime commitment and 
they can just do whatever the fuck they want is what it seems like um, regardless of precedent regardless of what's been ruled in the past they can just do away with that which is terrifying um, the Supreme Court has done so much damage in the last several weeks I'm at a loss but we can stay mad and we can vote and the elections are coming up we can protest we can vote we can make people know that this is not okay and that we will fight back and that we will not just quietly go back to the 1700s i don't know it's just crazy um so yeah this is a disaster it's so so horrible um so yeah the fourth of july is not going to be a celebration for me uh I'm done with this country <laughs> but I'm also not I'm I feel like I have a fire that's been sort of like lit under me to kind of get me out there and get me using my voice um, in very real ways and so man but it feels very apocalyptic does it not like I truly feel like I'm living in a dystopian novel which is why I uh, said that I'm coming to you from the Republic of Gilead which for those of you who don't know is the um, dictatorship authoritarian regime from The Handmaid's Tale which is very much like doesn't that feel like what we're what's happening in the world right now um, so yeah wow it's a lot it's a lot um, how are you guys taking care of yourselves? I think that's something that's really important for us to talk about because right now things can be feel really scary and a lot is out of your control, a lot is out of my control and so I think what I want to talk about here is how we can take care of each other and how we can take care of ourselves and um, for me that is through being with nature. So I am outside in this beautiful, beautiful location um, in my hometown of Steamboat Springs. Hopefully you can hear some birds chirping and things like that. Um, so it's being in nature. I've been doing a ton of mountain biking, a ton of hiking, and it's crafting. So I'm gonna talk about some of the crafting and some of the reading that I've been doing, and um, we'll go from there. So I have one totally finished object and I know that I had talked about kind of splitting up the baby knits, but I don't know. I think we both know, you and I, that um, this is, you know, I just do whatever happens, happens, it's fine, whatever. Um, so <laughs> this is a uh, petite knit pattern. It is for a little, ooh, I think I just got bit by something. Um, it is for a little like baby onesie and I really love it. So it is actually kind of damp because Edie has been wearing it a lot since we've been in the mountains. And sorry, I'm like sitting on this uh, table and I think I just got bit by something um, on my bum, which is like not where you want to get bit. But anyway, this is a really, really awesome pattern. I think the thought that's been put into this pattern is amazing, particularly because there are like short rows around the bum that makes the diaper fit better. Just genius, like so smart. And I knit it exactly to pattern. This is the newborn size, but classically I knit very loose. And so it is bigger than the newborn size. She's wearing like size three month right now and so that fits her now it is this really awesome nerd string uh, yarn and the only things that i had to do to finish it are to add this little button which is a little fox that i got from la mercerie um, and what i ended up doing is putting this it's a shank button and then on the back is just a little button that i got out of my mother-in-law's button jar uh, and then i just crocheted this little loop and kind of attached it in a very willy-nilly way i think there are ways to do this like how you're actually supposed to do it but i just kind of like crocheted a little loop and then like tied it on there because i can't be bothered but it works it is great and then the other thing i did like, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I feel like this was like 
genius, okay? Okay. Uh, I went to the store and I bought one of the like snap appliers. They're like these pliers that you use to put on plastic snaps onto clothes or fabric or what have you. And this pattern calls for you putting buttons, but like, ain't nobody got time for buttons. I did snaps instead. So what I did is I got that um, tool and it came with a bunch of white snaps, which I think you can get like any color of snaps that you want, but I'm just using the white ones because they're in there and it's fine. And what I did is on the side that won't be showing to the public, so on the inside of the two bottom seams, I just sewed in some fabric. So I just like whip stitch hand sewed that down. And then I put the snaps on, which there are probably tutorials on YouTube, but honestly, I just like followed the directions that came with the little snap tool. So I put the snaps on so that they can snap together. And I just think it's genius. I'm like oddly proud of myself for this. And in fact, I'm actually planning on making, or I'll show you in just a little bit, but there are some like sweaters and like other rompers that I'm thinking of making for Edie. And honestly, even if they call for buttons and would look better with buttons, I might like do snaps and then like sew buttons on the front so that it looks like it's a button, but actually it's a snap. I don't know. I haven't thought about it totally, but is this not just like the coolest thing? It just snaps. It's amazing. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> so yeah, the front of the snap is here, the back is there, and kind of this is what the inside looks like. Amazing. So yeah, that is this awesome little petite knit. I think it's called the Anker suit or something like that. But yeah, awesome, awesome pattern. And I'm gonna knit a million of them because Edie really loves it. Like she, she's kind of a little baby that like doesn't like to be cold. And so something like this is great. And it's just super wash. I would love, I'm actually knitting her a sweater that's um, not super wash, but I think for most things like this, I'm gonna do super wash because your girl throws up on it a lot. Like there's a lot of bodily fluids in and around the onesie. That is the only totally finished object I have. And then I have a couple of like near finished objects, almost finished objects. And one of them is the, I believe this was called the Pippa dress. And this is another thing that I knit for little Miss Edie. It is a little dress that I still have to sew buttons on and wind, you know, sew in all the ends. But other than that, it's totally done. This is also knit out of a super wash. There are two different yarns from my stash. They're just scraps. I honestly don't remember what they are, but they're both this really pretty pink. And here and here I marled them because these are fingering weight um, yarns, but I held them together in order to knit this. And yeah, it was really fun. It's got this really cute little lace motif at the front and then also around the hem and yeah. I think it's super cute. I think it's something where it will be kind of a dress for her for now and then eventually will be just like a shirt. And yeah, I don't want to knit like a ton of like super girly, you know, girly things, but like fuck the patriarchy. Anyway, but I just thought this was cute. And so I wanted her to have one little, you know, super girly thing, but yeah. I really like this. It's like a pale pink, but then also has a ton of speckles of like greens and blues and all sorts of different colors, purples. So unexpected and cool. So yeah, that is the Pippa dress, I think is what it's called, maybe. Sorry about that. It is much later in the day. Miss Edie needed to have some breakfast and so I am just back here catching up with you guys again. Um, I think that where we left off I was talking about my next finished object which is not totally finished. My next almost finished object is the Yell Cardigan by Marie Wallen. Let me throw this on and show you. <sighs> I'm obsessed. This is it. So 
I have talked about this cardigan a lot in previous episodes and I am actually also working on filming kind of like a project diary that's specific to just this cardigan that goes over a lot of the modifications and changes I made. But since we have last talked, I knit the second sleeve in the same exact way that I knit the first sleeve. So with the same modifications with doing some uh, mattress stitch at the underarm and this one turned out really well as well so there's a mattress stitch from there to there to make it smaller and then the same kind of chart that I came up with using Excel to go over all of the numbers and everything like that so finish the second sleeve and then I also knit the it's not a button band, but the front band. So I did change the front, front band a bit from what Marie Wallen has. So in the original pattern, I'll just show you on the sleeve, the three motifs that are used are this one, this one, and this one. And I decided to change it mostly because the way that Marie Wallen had it, this and this would be touching and that's just like a little bit too like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for me. Like I'm not, you know, I love TMNT but like, I don't know, it just was a little weird to me. So, and part of that is because I changed some of the colors and things like that. And so I liked a lot better this, this, and this motif which I really like the yarn that's the background for this because it's a blue but also has some green marled into it. It's really beautiful. So that is what I did. I did those three motifs and I think I rearranged them as well. It was a really easy modification because it's the same stitch repeat number. So I just threw in a different one, but this is what it looks like. And of course this has not been blocked, so <laughs> it doesn't look that great, but yeah. And then the other thing that I did with this is I cannot be bothered to knit in, uh, to knit color work flat. And so I knit it in the round. So you can see there's a couple of extra stitches here. And this was connected here. And I knit it in the round and then just cut that. And I tried a different sticking technique for this part. I don't know if you can see that it's pretty fuzzy and that is because I got a felting board and just a little felting kit on Amazon mostly because of the steak being a little bit off I'm being attacked by mosquitoes but the steak there were a couple things and I think what happened is that I think there were several rows where I didn't change the yarn right on the steak. I did it like a couple before or a couple after and that made it so that I didn't realize that when I cut the ends they weren't caught in the steak itself and so killed it. I might need to go get some. I'm getting eaten alive. Anyway so essentially what I did is I cut the steak and there were little ends poking out and so in order to make sure those stay put I bought this felting board and felted those little things down so it's hard to see but they were right here and a couple further up the steak I think right here but you can't see them at all now because they've just been felted down with the felting needle. So that worked really well. Anyway, I worked this in the round. Then on either side of the steak stitches, I just used the felting needle and I felted it down. And then I just literally took a <laughs> scissor and just cut it in half, which also this is very few stitches. Then what I did is I followed the pattern. So essentially the pattern is supposed to end right here. You're supposed to bind off there. But I've seen with a lot of people on Ravelry and also other podcasters that um, have videos here online that that edge around your neck and in the front was flipping up a lot. Like you were really not able to keep it down flat. And so what I ended up doing is knitting a column of just stockinette and I will end up, after it's blocked, stitching that down on the inside. So it'll look like this, and then like this. 
And the um, stockinette that I did, I first did, I don't know, maybe 10 rows or eight rows in the gray, the same gray that's the background color. And then I wanted there to be a little pop of the green, which was supposed to be in that whole motif that I eliminated and replaced with the blue. And so I did use a bunch of the extra green color I had and knit a bunch of it in green. And in that way, I think you'll still get little pops of that green from the inside. So essentially how I'm going to do this, here is the steaked edge. I'm gonna push that down so that it looks like this on the inside. And then I'm going to sandwich it like so. So that is the plan. And I think it's gonna look really good. So it'll look like this on the inside. I don't have it quite perfectly lined up here. Kind of like this on the inside. And then this on the outside. Really excited. I think it's gonna look really beautiful. So all I have to do for this is give it one final block and then kind of whip stitch so that neck band down and then I will have a fully finished yellow cardigan and I'm obsessed. I think I'm gonna wear this thing to death. The next couple of things I want to talk about are the sort of active works in progress that I'm doing right now. One is just a vanilla sock for Sean. So this is mustache yarns in the I think Captain Lando colorway, one of her Star Wars colorways. And it's this really awesome self-striping yarn. I think the thing that I like most about her yarns is that they're not all exactly the same width of stripe, which I'm sure is really hard to do mathematically. So I understand why other people don't do this, but I just think it looks really awesome to have the kind of different widths of stripes. So really enjoying that and just as you know vanilla socks go it's just really fun I'm getting eaten it's just a really fun um, thing to do to just kind of see the stripes coming the next work in progress that I want to talk about is living in my squirrel bag from cat of the heather and hops podcast and this is another baby knit this is the i think sunday cardigan by petite knit so it's whatever baby cardigan has like the eyelets like little yarn overs in it <laughs> and this is a really straightforward kind of raglan cardigan with a little bit extra going on it's pretty fun and i am knitting this out of my hand spun so i know the last time we were talking i was like i'm gonna make these into socks and i actually did cast on some socks and then changed my mind and i don't really remember why i think i essentially changed my mind because they were humongous like i cast them on and i think this is more of a sport weight yarn so i should have gauge swatched and gone down on my gauge but i couldn't be bothered to do that and so this is vfl that i spun into a three ply and it's pretty bouncy it's pretty nice to work with and then this is some polworth that is a two ply and i am holding them together to make this so cute. I love it. Let me show you it more close up. It's pretty dense because I think holding both of these together, it's like holding a sport weight yarn with a fingering weight yarn and it's supposed to be DK weight. So it's pretty dense when I'm knitting it, but I think it'll be very warm for Miss Edie May. So cute. So all I have to do for this is pick up the button band on the front and then make some little baby sleeves. So this should be done pretty quickly, but I've kind of turned my attention to another sweater. So this was a really fun um, knitting pattern. It's like really straightforward. I love all of the petite knit baby stuff. Like literally everything is so cute. <laughs> I love it. I'm obsessed. But this in particular is very nice. So really been enjoying that. And then the last uh, thing I have to talk about crafting wise 
is a sweater that I am knitting for one of my family members who has like a very big birthday coming up. Um, so I am knitting this out of Lore, which is 100% Kent lamb's wool sourced and produced in England. And this is the colorway shade name Fair, F-A-I-R. And it's this really beautiful blue that has like different, it's definitely wool and spun and it's, the wool is what is dyed and then it's kind of brought together. So it's got a lot of different colors all mixed into one um, with lighter blues, some gray, some purple. It's really, really beautiful. So I am knitting this into a sweater that I may have shown the swatch for, I can't remember, but it's called like the Cozy Hoodie. And it is essentially an all over textured hoodie. And I am obsessed with it. The designer has put so much thought into this sweater. I literally can't believe it. So this is how far I am. I finished the whole hood and I am just working the raglan increases. It's a little hard to show off. Let me put it on. This is what it looks like. I love it. <laughs> I want one, <laughs> which I think is the, uh, I think that's how you know it's gonna be a good gift when you're like knitting it and you're like, I kinda want this. <laughs> anyway, this is how far I am. You can kind of see the raglan stitches coming there. This is just a very, very well thought out sweater. I literally can't believe how well it's thought out. I was knitting the hood and I was just like this, is amazing. So as you can see, it's this all over texture pattern. And then the raglan is happening, happening on either side of these knit stitches so that you can see this really beautiful column and the stitches are kind of coming out of that. And then let me show you the hood because this thing, I've never knit a hood before. So maybe all hoods have this much like thought and care put into them, but this is crazy. So the hood is what you start with, which is brilliant because honestly, I did knit a, a swatch for this because it's not for me, but you could totally, totally start with the hood and have this be your swatch because you essentially start knitting from here up and you knit for like a certain number of centimeters and then you stop and you pick up along that rectangle around. So you pick up along this edge knit these and then pick up along this edge and then you knit flat down and that's what gives this like really awesome i mean it's just beautiful i'm like obsessed and then she does this really beautiful use of short rows to kind of shape it and make it come around here and so there are short rows in this section to bring you can kind of see them here. So like from here to here, there's like a triangle of short rows to bring this down a little bit. And then also there are short rows in the rib. So if you notice the rib here is wider than there. So there are short rows on either side of the rib as well. So once you've knit it flat, you then join to work in the round and you overlap the rib so that you have this like beautiful hugging hood. It's so good. And then the back, there's also, she puts some decreases right at the base of your skull. And they're just done in such a beautiful way. Let me show you. Can you see them here? I mean, the thought that's been put into this hood is insane. I love it. It looks so cool. So anyway, I'm really excited. <laughs> this has to be done in like a month. So I am just going to be knitting on it for forever. And literally it took me like four or five days of knitting, like kind of a lot to knit just the hood because hoods are like humongous. Who'd have known? Who'd have thought? But I'm obsessed. I really love it. I really love the yarn. Everything about this project is just like bringing me life because it's also, 
I think once you've been knitting for a long time, it's fun to do something new. Like with the yell cardigan, I had already done some all over color work, sweaters and things like that. Never at that small of a gauge, but I had never steaked before. And now I just feel like the world is opening up to me with steaking. But steaking is something that I can like wrap my head around where I think the use of short rows and just the thoughtfulness of the way that this sweater is constructed that I'm working on right now, I never would have been able to like conceptualize that in my brain. So it's just crazy the creativity that this maker has. So really enjoying that. So you'll see that more in the coming episodes. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about is just a couple of books. So uh, I'll start with just my two favorite baby books right now. One of them is called Counting on Community. And this is really cute because it essentially goes one through 10, but it has like a really diverse set of characters. Like one is for pinata for every holiday. And then they're just every kid in it is different and like it's just so fun I really really love this and then I want to show you my favorite page there's this one eight picket signs showing that we care I love it I'm like obsessed nine tasty dishes yummy yummy potluck so anyway I love this thing and then the second baby book that I'm really enjoying is a kissing hand for Chester Raccoon. It's about um, a little boy or little raccoon who's afraid to go to school and his mom tells him that she like kisses his hand and he can know that she'll always be there because yeah, I don't know, the love, it's so cute. Anyway, and I'm actually getting a little picture of this as my next tattoo for Edie because I just think it's so cute, but it's this little, don't you just love that little scene? But I asked her to make him knitting, so we'll see if we'll see if that happens. And I'm not gonna get like an exact replica. I just sent that to my tattoo artist, the same one who did this one here, and was like, make this your own. Like, put them in clothes, have them doing other things, like whatever you want. But I want kind of like an ode to Edie with that little scene from a picture book that I read to her. That is all for baby books, but I have a bunch to talk about. Um, I have finished two books. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting eaten alive, it's fine. Um, one of the books that I finished reading was The Lesbiana Gu Lesbiana's Guide to Catholic School by Sonora Reyes. This was amazing. The first, it's just filled with so much teening. So this was like a five out of five stars. It was so, so good. It followed a young woman, she's like a 16 year old girl who was going to a public school. Her and her brother were both going to public school. Her brother's like one year younger than her. And her brother's been getting into a bunch of fights, been getting into a lot of trouble. Um, and they're both really smart. And so her brother and her both transfer to this like very affluent, very white uh, private school that's a Catholic school. And it is, so good. There's so much teen angst and there's love. There's, you know, some hard hitting topics, but also some just like beautiful found family and there's some love stories in it. It's so good. Um, I will say that the main character, her like voice is magnificent. Like I want to be friends with her. I want to know her. I just think she's so fucking funny and like has such a beautiful way of describing difficult topics and this isn't all just like rainbows and sunshine you know I think like it's a very well-rounded book because it does cover some other topics including um the main character her father has been deported so her father is no longer living with her and it's you know talks about the hardship it it is to you know, not be able to see your dad and hug your dad and only be able to kind of connect with him over the phone and over FaceTime and things like that. Um, it talks about homophobia, it talks about racism, um, but in like a really wonderful way. And in some ways talking about the, the racism in particular, there are like some funny things that happen. So for instance, she is at a party and you know they're all drinking and like having a good time and one of the kids from her new school comes up to her and he's like oh like 
<clears throat> do you speak Spanish blah 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 and she's like yeah I speak Spanish and he's just like will you say my name in Spanish and she just says Connor <laughs> and it says in there like I said Connor in the widest way I possibly could <laughs> and it's just like hilarious like the little microaggressions and just the way that she handles those microaggressions gave me life um, so yeah, I really, really loved it. I, again, I talk about this frequently, but I am a cis white woman. So, um, my voice is not the one you should necessarily be listening to about this, but a lot of, um, Latinx people that I know and love really loved this book as well. So read it. It's so, so good. The title of the first chapter is thou shalt not trust a two faced bitch, which I just, it's just things like that, you know, like there's teen angst, but, um, but it's very, it's not like too over the top. Like, I think all of it is like very understandable things that these kids are dealing with, you know, it's not, not crazy. So yeah, it's very good. It's very good. I don't know if I ever actually described what it is about. I talked about them going to their school, but essentially the main character is really wanting to stay in the closet and then there's this other girl at her school who's like out and proud and she's really beautiful and smart and cool and like things go from there it's so good so good so good um and then the next thing that i just finished reading was also so good these were both like five out of five stars easy five out of five stars just so so incredible and this is a lady for a duke by alexis hall this is honestly everybody should be reading this book it's so good it's a good time to read it because if you need an escape i honestly think that for both of these books with everything that's going on in the world they are a good escape because they're kind of safe in a way you know like they're both kind of romance novels where like you expect things to turn out well in the end like it's wonderful so this follows um two characters and one of them, um, I'm always so bad at remembering people's names, Viola. Uh, Viola is this wonderful, I mean, look how gorgeous she looks. Anyway, I, when I was reading this, I was feeling like a little bit self-conscious because it does seem like one of those kind of like cheesy romance novels, but I love that it's kind of subverting that because it is a cheesy romance novel, but it's a cheesy romance novel where the lead character is a trans woman who she was fighting in the war a war of like i don't know 1800 some war that was going on in the 1800s so she's fighting in that war and it is thought by everybody that she knows and loves that she was killed in battle so um instead she she actually wasn't killed she is able to kind of escape this life and live as her true self as viola and it is about her after she's kind of um transitioned and it is about her so essentially she hears that her best friend from before is having a really, really hard time without her. Um, he has fallen into a very, very deep depression after she was lost and he wasn't able to find her body. And he also has a lot of war wounds and things like that that make him um, disabled and that is really hard for him as like this duke that is supposed to be you know noble and all those things so he's just dealing with a lot while also having the loss of his best friend and like they're like so many beautiful quotes like him talking about his friend so I'm getting ahead of myself because I love this book so much. So essentially she discovers, Viola discovers that her best friend from before is having a really, really hard time without her. And so she decides to go back and help him and help his sister, but kind of disguised as this friend of her steps or friend of her sister-in-law. Sounds confusing, but it's not. And it's essentially a beautiful second chance romance. And at the beginning, it's just this gorgeous thing where Viola is hearing how much she meant to him. And it's also beautifully complex, you know, because 
he never really knew her. He knew part of her, but he didn't know who she really was. And so there's, you know, a lot of mixed emotions in hearing how much she meant to him. And there's a lot of guilt that she has for having kind of left him, but she obviously could not live a lie anymore and she needed to be able to live as her own true self and so it has a lot of really beautiful discussions around what it means to be trans and acceptance and moving on and there's you know and understanding that you know she was willing to give up everything to just be herself because she was dying as someone else you know and i think for people who don't really understand the trans experience in the way that i don't because i'm a cis woman um it's just a really really powerful book but also like happy and there's like beauty and fun and balls and whimsy and dance scenes and sex scenes it's like got it all and there's like really funny characters there's like a you know <laughs> There's so much, there's such good representation. Um, I will say there are some trigger warnings for both of these books, I should say for um, The Lesbiana's Guide to um, Catholic School, there's several trigger warnings, including, like I said, racism, um, deportation, um, homophobia, uh, suicidality, um, those are the big ones that I can think of. And then for this one, um, there's some suicidality, there's um, talk about ableism um, and being disabled. There is um, obviously transphobia, homophobia, um, addiction is a big part of this because um, the Duke is with all of the pain that he has. He has a, um, he's addicted to laudanum um, and morphine maybe I'm not sure if that was invented at that time I can't remember but anyway so there are some trigger warnings with both of these and I think that's why I loved both of the books is because they do have some hard-hitting topics but are funny and heartfelt and just brilliant uh there's one character in this called Lady Marley who is my favorite character probably that I've read about in a really long time she is hilarious and I think the other thing that's really beautiful about this is like you know, unfortunately, I actually don't know how um, trans people were treated during this time, but I assume that it was not good. And I assume that there was a, ow, I keep getting bit by something. And I assume that there wasn't um, like understanding with families, but this is a really beautiful portrayal of like a family that accepts you. And yeah, I loved it please read this. Like, I want everyone to read it. I want everybody to look at us like, what are all these people doing reading this like weird romance novel? Like, I don't understand what's the big deal with this like romance novel. Cause like, when I first saw the cover of this, I did not expect it to be like about a trans woman and like a second chance and oh, it's beautiful. So, so good. And then, the last book I have to talk about is just what I'm currently reading. I just picked this up, so I've only read like 10 pages, but it is Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb. And this is the second book in the Farseer trilogy. So I just read um, the first book a couple of months ago and I am ready to jump back in. I don't want to give too much away, obviously, because I think this, you know, this really starts off right as the second book ends. Um, but it follows Fitz, who is a bastard of the, one of the princes in the Farseer line. And it is about him being kind of left at the doorstep of the keep and being trained as an assassin. Um, and there's magic and there's animal companions and it's really good. It's really well written. I love romances or <laughs> fantasies written by women and men. I just love fantasy. And so if you're looking for an escape in another way, if you're looking to like literally escape this world because shit is so fucked, then consider picking up a fantasy. There are a lot of really good ones. Other one that's really high on my list is um, Rebecca Roanhorse's uh, second novel after um, Black Sun is out and I really want to get my mitts on that. So those are kind of the things that are percolating in my brain to be reading next, but. <sighs> 
I hope you all are taking care of yourself. This has been a really, really rough time. And I see you and I hear you and I'm here for you. It's just not been easy. So I really want to take care for, you know, I really want this to be a place where people can come to as an escape, but also to know that they have solidarity and that people are here and people are trying to make change and they're not alone in feeling lost and scared and mad that that we're in this together and we're gonna get through it and we're gonna make change. I have to believe that because if I don't, I will like seriously lose my mind um, and my anxiety will just overwhelm me. So let's stay mad and let's do something about it. All right, with that, the only other random PSA that I have that I was listening to on the news that I just think like everyone should know about is that if you are a person who menstruates, I would seriously consider deleting any menstruation apps from your phone, which sucks because like what kind of dystopian fucking world are we living in? But that type of data can be seized by the government um, in the case of something like a miscarriage or if you are trying to get an abortion in another state, things like that. So in order to avoid prosecution, I think for now it might be wise to not be keeping that data in somewhere that's that easily accessible. I'm just going to throw it out there. You do with it what you will, but it scares me a little bit. So. Anyway, we're gonna do this. We're gonna fight back. We're not gonna just quietly <laughs> change into a fascist dictatorship. I like have to believe that. So anyway, with that, I hope that you are taking some time this summer to do anything that brings you joy, whether it's reading, knitting, sewing, having brunch with friends, drinking a glass of wine, drinking tea, sitting in silence, watching TV, whatever it is, I hope that you're able to do something that brings you some joy and some comfort in these very unsettling times. I'm thinking of all of you, I'm here with you, and let's do this. Let's fight like hell. <laughs>